thank you so much for joining us. This is the inaugural episode of the 26 minute show. Uh, we're going to try to feature some some names in the public outside the sports sector, inside the sports sector, not related to sports. Uh, our first guest, we're very happy to have my friend, I, I feel comfortable saying that, my friend Zach Sheldon from Trainwreck Sports is joining us today. We are friends. I think we are all friends here, and I'm happy to be here on the inaugural. I'm glad I check all those boxes in some kind of psychotic way, do, so yeah. thanks for having me, folks. Yeah, we're, yeah folks, there it is. I, yeah, we need a, we need a sign on. You'll get there. Listen, yes. I, 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 it took me about 250 episodes okay. before anybody even cared. So, right. like, yeah. that's, you know, you guys will get there. All right, we've got some time there. Yeah. All right. So, Zach, uh, I did mention you're from Trainwreck Sports. Uh, we know you. We love you. Um, tell us a little bit about you. Who is Zach Sheldon? So, I grew up, obviously, born in Buffalo. Now, mm-hmm. the thing a lot of people don't know, <clears throat> when I was seven, moved away from the western New York area to Summit, New Jersey, to be closer to New York City, where my dad worked. Okay. Also lived, like, in Westchester County area, and then moved back to Clarence uh, when I was 15. Wow. So, yeah, so between 8 and 14, didn't live in Buffalo or whatever. Came back, obviously, like, loved Buffalo that mm-hmm. whole time. Like, mm-hmm. was kind of like a weirdo, like, Buffalo sports fan down yeah. in, 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 you know, southeastern New York, basically. Uh, but, yeah, like, that's kind of... I think, you know, and I moved a couple times as a kid, so it kind of made it to where, like, I always had to be, like, kind of communicating with people and kind of, like, trying to make friends, and so I kind of have, like, a weird, you know, personality off of that, I would right. say. Well, a little bit different, uh, but yes, it's, uh, you know, it's been an entertaining ride, and yeah, so went to Syracuse for school, mm-hmm. graduated, working, like, sales jobs, and just always wanted to do something in media, something in sports, right. you know, something like that, so it kind of drove me to what, you know, me and my friend created as a uh, train rock sports. And the rest is some sort of history. It could be it's, twisted, could I mean, be could be demented, it's but but it's a tale. <laughs> it's a tale. That's awesome. Uh, they call you maniac. Yes. Where does that come from? Well, so when we started Trainer Sports, we're like, you know, nobody wants to like we wanted to be different. We're, that was our out of the gate from 2016 to 2018, 2019 for sure. It was always like, how could we be different? How could we be different? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Like, let's all at least have these like kind of like pseudo names for each other like because because you know the other thing too is you know people wanted to be in the public sphere but you didn't necessarily want to have like your actual name out there right so yeah, like, you know yeah. things like that for a lot of reasons I as you it. can understand mm-hmm. so my thinking was listen my you know personality is a little out there mm-hmm. you know my opinions i thought at the time were a little bit out there now that i've seen a lot more opinions i, I think i think i'm actually <laughs> re- re- rather rather reeled in yeah <laughs> uh but yeah so i'm just like let's go maniac like one word like and that's yeah. it and it's just like yeah and I will say on one side, it allows me to get a little crazy, allows me mm-hmm. to get a little like loud and out there at times, kind of excuses that behavior. On the other side, I can't really have any scandals because if it somehow reached like the media, you know, they would have a headline like, okay, oh, I mean, lo- local maniac has <laughs> unpaid parking tickets or something, you know, like it would be terrible. <laughs> but it tracks though, you know, people are like, maniac, oh yeah, okay. I yeah, oh, I mean, I think people like it. I mean, I think, you know, you get a quick name like Madonna, Prince, uh-huh. Maniac, you know, just yeah. something quick like that. So they're, nice. they're behind it. Do people call you that? You, you, like, when you're out in public, do you get that a lot? or people? Um, You know, the the when, like, and again, I'm not going to say every single person. Like, you know, I go to a Bill's tailgate, there might be one person who, like, okay. is familiar or something. But, like, the one, it's, it's one of two things. The, they'll either say, like, Maniac, or they'll be, like, train wreck. Like, okay. that's the thing. And, yeah. then, and, you know, the funny thing is, like, when it first, like, and again, I don't mean to sound like a <laughs> Am I allowed to say that on, on the 26th we'll, we'll, show? We'll, okay, we'll bleep we'll, it out. We'll yeah. bleep it out. We'll put it. We'll put a Hall of Fame shirt over my <laughs> mouth and bleep it out. Um, but, like, when it first started happening where I was getting recognized in, like, public, like, it was super weird or whatever. But I would get, like, super excited about it because, you know, we were doing podcasts, we were yeah. doing shows, super excited to get recognized. And I would go up and like people would be like, oh, like maniac or oh, train wreck. And I would like, hey, like, what's up? Like, what's your name? And people would be like, really, I realized people didn't really like that. Yeah. They really just want like the quick like interaction. So yeah. now when anyone does that, I just go, this train never stops. And they, they seem to really like that. Okay. So that's that's good to know because I've, I've gotten, I always approach people about shirts. Yes. And I'll say something. I drew your shirt. Yes. Most people don't care. Yeah. The, most of them are like, yeah, cool. You, you, what, I, the way I would frame it if I was you, would be like you, you would, you'd be topless if it wasn't for me right now. Well, I don't know if we can do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll get there though. So Syracuse University. Uh, that's all very cool. Are you still? You're still a Cuse 
fan, obviously. Yeah, well, it's weird because, you know, obviously loved Cuse. That was where I went to school. Enjoyed, like, the football, basketball team there. Great mm-hmm. memories. They went to the Final Four the year after I graduated. Um, you know, on the flip side, now that I'm back at, you know, in Western New York and working a lot with UB over mm-hmm. the past, like, half decade, like, I've formed a lot of good relationships over there. So okay. even though I was at Syracuse, and truthfully, a lot of UB faithful don't love Syracuse because they kind of get a lot more media attention as far as sure. sports and everything right. like yeah, that. yeah. I, I'm, like, a weird person who, like, went to Cuse but supports UB and, like, okay. supports both. So it's a little yeah. bit of a hybrid weirdo, yeah. I would say. Oh, that's interesting because, it, like, we don't, we forget that we have a, a big-name school here. Like, yeah, UB I is... think, you know, UB, sometimes I love them. I, I, I think that they are underrated by the Absolutely, local people. Yeah. Like, like, for how adamant people are about going to Bills and Sabres games, mm-hmm. it does surprise me sometimes how – you know, sometimes people don't go to UB football games. Like right now, for example, they're, you know, three and one, I believe, in conference yeah. play. Solid start, you know, to conference play here. Right. And could be playing for a spot in the conference championship in Detroit. But, you know, you, you'd like to see more people there, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Um, so you started train Trainwreck train wreck with uh, your friend. Who's yes. your friend? How did, how did it all get? So my friend Alex Shoup, Degenerate Al. Degenerate. You know, as, as everyone uh, knows him as. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he basically... It was after the Bills lost to the Patriots. Okay. They went home that day. I, I, now, I wasn't there, full, right. full discretion, uh, and just recorded a podcast, like, on their back porch, just, like, basically complaining. The whole premise was that, at that point, you know, Buffalo sports were a complete mess. Like, they had literally lost to the Patriots, like, by 30 that day. Mm-hmm. Like, the Sabres were in no shape. Like, right. UB was kind of in a weird spot as well. So the idea was that Buffalo sports were kind of a train wreck. And right. instead of, like, yeah. you know – pulling punches and like you know kind of trying to look on the bright side like a lot of fans do or like a lot of like media do- does in people's opinions yeah we were just going to kind of like call it like it wasn't kind of embrace how bad it was yeah 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 we've we've done that too i mean sometimes you just kind of gotta you gotta go with the flow yeah like literally i mean let's face it if everyone thinks something is like horrible right you kind of you kind of just go there. even exactly. if you're like eh, I'm 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 indecisive on right. it. You just gotta go. You gotta go full fledged. Yeah, you can still be a fan and, and think it's a train wreck. No half measures, as as they say in Breaking Bad. Absolutely, Dad. perfect. Yes. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you mentioned Al. Uh, you you guys and Al, some... and Al was my like Al was my friend going back to that's the thing a little difference about like you know the typical person who joins in train wreck like. A lot of the people who have joined in Trainwreck, I didn't know before they came to Trainwreck Sports. You know what I mean? Okay, like yep. Slick L, yep. Gatesy, you yep. know, Micah, like these guys. I didn't know until they came to Trainwreck Sports, but now I've met them, had experience with them, went to Detroit with Slick and Micah recently, mm-hmm. uh, you know, did some great stuff with Gatesy. He's doing uh, great Sabres updates every day. But the difference, you know, and this happens, obviously, is like with Al, like Al and I had been friends for a decade plus, like wow. before Trainwreck. Okay. Like, like we had like gone to like the same high school. We had, you know, to party together in college things sure. like that yeah and you know when you're doing stuff in like a media group or something especially when everyone's not being paid full-time things right. like that you know those relationships go a long way and mm-hmm. as far as how you're going to like carry yourself as far as how you're going to communicate yourself so that obviously made things a lot easier in the overall operation of our right. organization but you know it's been amazing to see where we've gone from there and yeah, a lot of fun. You know, the funny thing is when I look back to that, like those first couple years of Trainwreck Sports, like, no, we didn't have, you know, a handful of sponsors. Like, we didn't have, like, companies offering us, like, free stuff. Right. But there were, like, it was more of, like, an like an ignorance is bliss. Like, you know, we sure. didn't know what we were doing. So yeah, it was yeah. kind of just like, oh, we're having so much fun running with, like, our, basically our heads cut off. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what you don't know. And, yeah. And you're happy for it. Yeah, I love that. Um, so so you guys had some, some national – attention yes uh for better or worse but how, how do you handle that much exposure on something that's really kind of out of your control but you're still getting the exposure and you know there were a lot of comments and stuff it's like well we know these guys and they're good dudes yeah i mean you know it goes both ways right like you can get viral posts and everything like sure, that like yeah, so we've absolutely. had our share of posts that have gone viral you know people share it all the rules of the internet, and the internet works in a completely different way to reality. Sure. Like, plain and simple. So you have to yeah. know that going in before okay. anything else. With that said, you know, that one, you know, particular instance, you know, obviously last year on that show, it was very interesting. I mean, you know, because in the moment, you know, you want to, you know, a lot of people you're reaching for the first time, especially, too, on the internet, like, they're mm-hmm. seeing you for the first time or right. whatever. 
Yeah. So in that case, it's like you want to scream like or you want to like, you know, message like this. It, this isn't who I am. This is who right. I am. Like things yeah, like yeah. that. You know, at the same time, it's tough because, you know, I think the right play in that moment was to kind of like, let's just like let our behavior do the talking. Sure. Like, you know, there's like like yeah. there's nothing, you know, in our past that we should be like, yep. you know, overly, you know, sensitive about sure. nothing to worry about there. So, you know, I wanted to let kind of our actions and our behavior speak for themselves. Now, that's also tough because, like I said, time moves a little different on the Internet. So yeah. it feels like, you know, an hour could be like a day. Sure, like, you know, yeah, I think yeah. a lot can happen, obviously, right, in, the, yeah. in the way the Internet works. So it's tough to, like, wait and do that and let our behavior and let our actions and let, like, our, us show who, like, we actually are. But in the end, you know, I think it was kind of like the long, the right way to go about it. I know, I, there's no, like, right answer to your question, you know yeah, what I mean? No, no, it's, there is the Internet. There, yeah. there's a, it's a constantly changing sphere. Yeah, and you're – and. For for no you know other reason you're not gonna please everyone regardless oh, of what percent. you say. If you if you go into it trying to please everyone, you're gonna literally explode your own brain. You're gonna make it worse yes. in, in a lot of cases because yes. you you almost overcorrect. Yeah. Um, and then you're not being genuine. Right. Like, and then yeah. the, the thing no person on the internet likes is a big phone. Right. Yeah. Right. So, like you come out with some big written thing and it's like nah, nobody wants that. Uh, but I thought you, I thought you guys handled it with. A, a ton of poise and, and dignity and, and um, like you said, your character really showed through and I think that, you know, that's really the only way you can handle something like that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you you were known, when I met you, you yes. had your hair. Yes, yes. And there was a big thing. Technically should still have it. I, well, that's what I was going to say. Some people would say. I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, that you don't have it. It's yeah. been a, quite a while. Yeah, now it has. It, it has. Um, but uh, what? What? So why'd you? You uh, bailed. You know. It. Well, here's the thing. I do like making bets. Sometimes. Boy, that sigh. Was I'll really... be honest. I do. I do <laughs> like making bets. It, it was a telling sigh, yeah. as they say. I do like making bets, but I mean, I just looked at the Sabers and I'm like Ryan O'Reilly, Evander Kane. Mm-hmm. You know, Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhart. You know, and I thought, like, Rasmus was sly and was good at that point. I guess, you know, that just shows my ignorance is this yeah, uh, yeah. factor there. But, you know, I just looked at it and I go, you know what? Like, I, I've kind of never grown my hair out. Yep. I, I maybe can grow it out for, like, a year or two here. Mm-hmm. And I can be like, hey, you know, the Sabres are going to break a playoff drought, which at that point was, like, six years. Yeah. Six years is a long time in the NHL to not make the playoffs. Now they're, at, now they're at, like, a decade, yeah. 11 years. So it's crazy. But. You know, you go to that, and then it just felt like except like like it felt like they they kept getting into worse spot. Now, if you remember the ten game winning streak, I do in twenty eighteen. I do at that point in December, they were ninety five percent to make the playoffs. Yeah, ninety five percent. Yeah, and, and they, they were they were and they and sadly that didn't even go down to like the last like five games. Like oh, they yeah. completely fell out of it. Yeah. So I thought I was gonna have it out there. Then like the COVID stoppages were happening. It yeah. wasn't just the you know the games were like less they were literally like not playing for a while and i'm like okay this might be my chance to kind of get out of it like weasel out for okay. sure yeah. and so you know i kind of did two birds one stone we were working with amber sale house i just go if you go over the next week to amber sale house you get a free drink like any day you want on me like you know and okay. i teamed up with them you just gotta say savers stanley cup 2022 i think it was <laughs> yeah that was our uh, hope there but yeah so we did that the tab was large. I'm sure we it ran was, up a large yeah. tab, but yeah, for the first time in basically five years, I was able to cut my hair. It was a long. I was getting to the point where I was sleeping, and then mm-hmm. like my hair was getting into like my mouth, and I would mm-hmm. wake up like choking on my own hair. Yeah, like and people don't understand that struggle. No, I, I had long hair. Uh, a lot of people don't know I had long hair for a while in college. And, yes, uh, in high school into college. And okay, so I, I fully empathize with. It. Yeah, it's a mop. It is. It's tough. You're dealing with a lot there. You know, yeah. And then you go from, like, it looking good and being, like, straight out to it looking, yeah. like, you know, kind of, like, not good. And humidity. And forget about it. Oh, uh, yeah. Humidity, know. disaster. Heat, disaster. In the winter, nice. In the winter, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, Keep you nice. warm. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. But, yeah. So, I do miss the hair. Uh, it was a bad wager, clearly. I mean, yeah. I, now, now, I will say I did one other wager where I put something, like, relatively large on the line, in my opinion. What's this Going now? into the 2020 NFL season. Okay. This was after Josh Allen had had a progressing yep. 2019 year. You know, right. they'd taken him to the playoffs. I go, you know, like Josh Allen was like, like 
eighth or ninth in MVP odds or something. I think he was like 35 or 40 to one at the start of the 2020 season. And I go, if Josh Allen wins the MVP, you know, 35 to 41 shot, I will dress as Josh Allen and run from the stadium to Chippewa. Okay. And live stream it. Now, again, not, a lot of people might not have cared or whatever. Who does, right? Well, but at the end of the day, Josh Allen went in the 2020 season and finished second in MVP voting to Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers, one of the two. But yeah. I feel like I will bat a little bit. So well, people yeah. fault me for the hair, but you, you didn't. You, you got to give me a little credit for the Josh I'll, Allen. I give you a ton of season there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a that's a good wager. That's a good. Yeah, yeah. I, I valued us in. I got yeah. us all a little value yeah, there. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're a Game of Thrones guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was actually. Well, you will. I think yes. you well were. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At this point. Uh. Yeah, I'm Song of Ireland. Well, and House of the Dragon now. House of uh, the Dragon. On, yeah. on, on HBO or, or yep. Max or yep. whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, I don't but, know what uh, they're calling it. But yeah, no, I was. Listen, they would. Uh, you know, it's very funny. Game of Thrones was such a good show because they had these awesome texts to adapt from and everything, and then they had great dynamic characters, and it was a good story. You know, it went it against the juxtaposition of what typically happened. You know, the yeah. the villains won sometimes, mm-hmm. and. You know, the heroes weren't always, like, black. Or heroes and villains weren't always black and white. Like, you were seeing each side. Oh, that was what made it great. The dialogues, everything like that. Yep. Then it's literally logistically proven the last two to three seasons that basically every episode had less words, mm-hmm. and they did have less to adapt from because those books weren't fully written yet. Right. They weren't able to pick, you know, certain scenes, certain dialogues, sure. certain lines right from it. So you know that uh, everyone kind of universally agrees, seven, eight, et cetera. Like, the show kind of fell off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Are you? Are you, you agree? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to go against you. Or we nope. could have a healthy nope. debate. We're going. We're um. Going. But yeah, I think that House of the Dragon is almost like, you know, the Bills' offense yeah. getting back to like letting Josh do like what Josh is. Josh running. running. Like like dragons are like Josh running. Yep. When Josh sure. is running, you're gonna be you're gonna be in good shape. Every when you have season. dragons, you're gonna be in good yeah. shape. So House of the Dragons in good shape. Ready for season two for sure. Excited. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I I, I love it. Did, were you? Did you read the books as well? or you So just... here's the deal. I, I will admit, I, I listened to the books on tape. Okay. Well, so During or? Yeah, so this was a time when I was actually working a sales job for Verizon. Mm-hmm. So there would be times where I was driving like 30 to 40 minutes like each way like for a job that day okay. or whatever. So I just fired it up on YouTube, audiobook, like run a chapter on the way there. It was awesome. Yep, yep. Who needs pump-up music? Give me give I, me a Jon Snow chapter from I'm from. Saying. From a dance with dragons. That's what I'm saying. A, a good podcast or an audio book. Oh is yeah, way better than Jon Snow. Let's, let's talk. Let's this. talk about when we first met. When we when first... we first met for ex- the extensive time. The, yes. The, the Papa Shot competition. The Papa Shot competition. At the at the old. The old tri yeah tri main center. The tri main center is like. <laughs> Did you like it? Now that, now that you're not there anymore, uh, now that you're now, now you obviously like this one more because this is way more this, like yeah. this is 26 shirts is like it. This is our head like, head. like in Trimane, you're kind of like amongst a lot of stuff going on. That's right. Like that, it's crazy There's all the lot. stuff going on at Trimane. There's a lot of things going on in Trimane. Um, yeah, and there's never a dull moment. In yeah, a place like I that. could imagine. But being on the fifth floor, kind of tucked back. Uh, it was hard for people to find us, so you know it. Uh, yeah, well, that was probably good and bad. Like, like so the the stalkers and the creepers and the haters couldn't access you easily, but right. then people come in from Toronto. They wanna they wanna see they wanna you. They wanna see Dell. They wanna. They got a park. It was. It yeah. You guys and you guys were down the hallway a little yeah. bit there. Yeah, it's a bit of a walk. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah we met the first time we met extensive. The first time we actually officially met. Yes. You modeled. Oh my goodness! And I was the the, the, the Godzilla. The God, yes. Uh, uh, I heard it was a top seller. <laughs> it was. It was. It still is. It, that's, it, it's one of Dell's favorites. I know that. It, sure. uh, it was the Godzilla. I mean, not to get too off track. You see the Godzilla movies? Oh yeah, of course. Okay, so what do you think? I mean, I thought obviously in 2014 they did a good job because they didn't show him a lot. It was right. more like they like they they did a good feature. King of the Monsters was really good. Yeah, I thought King of the Monsters yep. was incredible. Yep. I don't know why. Like, but it was good. Like, yeah, like it was just was like, maybe just like Monster Mash. Like, yeah. you know, like, that's what you need. Now, I thought Godzilla vs. Kong fell a little short of, of See, what I was I, looking for. I was going to say, that one was my favorite. Because okay. I like when they're, when they're all in. And they, I, loved... I mean, they're all in. The, the center of the earth was a little. Uh, that's but, but, exactly. but they also, but they also went to the center of the earth in King of the Monsters and it felt fine to right. me. Right. Right. Um, yeah, they, I don't, I, I didn't love that. But I do love, I love when there's, like, when monsters are 
are yes. fighting each other. It can't be a good, a good, a good monster fight. Good yeah. monster fight choreography yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, almost as good as my modeling choreography that day. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was like, I remember thinking like, this guy, like, he's got a natural kind of. Did you have you always kind of had that just natural? You said you know, growing up elsewhere kind of helped you uh, like project yourself in a in a in a delightful way. I think you know. No, I'm not like you know sharing any pearls of wisdom. I don't think or saying no, this for I, the first yeah, time. No. But yeah, I think that you know moving around a lot and things like that I've kind of learned like, and my you know this goes back to like my parents kind of like to like if you don't like kind of not not even like speak up for yourself but just like voice yourself like you're yeah. gonna kind of get like especially in today's world. I mean you'll get absolutely lost in the you know in the wash of it all for yeah, sure. So, for sure. Yeah. You know sometimes it's an annoying opinion I want to get out there. Sometimes it's something that people actually want to hear. So yeah. No, we'll uh, keep, I think we'll just keep moving, it, shaking and rolling. Exactly right. Yeah. You. I. I completely agree because you know I mean if you don't if you're not who you are all the time yeah a hundred percent I mean that's the battle for us I always tell everyone like at, at our group right mm-hmm. I go yeah you could plan it all out like you could do it and you can make it sound professional of course like that's always good sure. people do love polish like they respect right. it etc at the end of the day like your actual like organic self will be the thing that like can take you to like the top, like yeah. to where or like to like you know the promised land where you want to be like actual people invested in you, mm-hmm. people want to see you, people are in like want to see what you're doing next. So yeah, I mean, I'm, we're always really like you have to be your actual self. Yeah, yeah, because you can't just be a, a carbon copy of. Yeah, I mean, like listen, like no, seen. like is it funny to see us in like suits every so often, like pretending to be sure. professional at right. like events? Like, of course, yes, it is. But that we use that more as a juxtaposition to like that's the rarity. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So we yeah. kind of have that same mentality here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, talk about t-shirts. faking it till you make it. Yeah, I mean, we're all, we're all t-shirts and and shorts here. And, yeah, you know, we just we put on a suit coat somewhere. And people are like, what's going on? It is. It is. You know, I mean, gotta, well, you know, you gotta you gotta kind of uh, you know just roll with it. Roll blue with collar. It hey, we're a blue collar. Blue collar. Region. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if you were if you were Introducing someone to Buffalo. This is okay. the thing yes. we're going to try. We can yeah. go into depth on this. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you're introducing about, you have a friend coming in, never been to Buffalo before. Okay. First stop before, you know, you pick them up from the airport. First stop, anything. I think if you ask anybody, the number one, like, power ranking is probably mm-hmm. go to Barbell. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, I'm going to go, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Amherst. I'm going to Elmo's. Going to Elmo's. Yeah. Okay. Elmo's See, is the forgotten wing, and and everyone who follows me knows that that I do advocate on Elmo's behalf because I feel do. like they get lost in the mess. Everyone yeah. says nine eleven, mm-hmm. you know, Bar Bill, mm-hmm. Wing Nuts now very popular on social media, yeah, helping I, I, uh, going I, a lot, and, and they were at our tailgate last night, and they are superb. Wing Nut, a Wing Nuts wing, is is a nine or better or a ninety or better on my scale or whatever. Mm-hmm. What I will say is that it's almost like a different wing, though, entirely, with the way it's breaded mm-hmm. and everything. It's very hard to compare a wingnut's wing with all the other wings. So it's not, apple, it's not apples to apples. It's not apples yeah. to apples. How does your – you said your, your rating scale. How does your, how does your scale I, I go work? I go zero. It's just zero to 100. Okay. So, again – What it, are your factors? Um, well, you got, obviously, like, the flavor. Mm-hmm. You got the appearance, you know, because obviously the first look kind of gets you, like, you know, yeah, geared yeah. in. Yes, yeah. gets you amped. Um, you know, I, I, you know, little side factors like, you know, is it house made blue cheese or is it like a pack of cans, like okay. prepackaged, like that factors in. And you, which um, one do you prefer? You, um, oh, I always prefer the, the, like, like homemade. Fresh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like, I think that's pretty safe. 100% there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you got your crunchiness. I, I like it crisp and crunchy. Okay. I like the wing crisp and crunchy, but I like that, like, with everything. Like, I like my meat, like, cooked, like, a little bit more, sure. like, stuff like that. Yeah. So that's kind of the way I am. Everyone's a little bit different. Yeah. You know, Pat Moran, I think, who mm-hmm. does a lot of wing reviews as mm-hmm. well. He like he likes it a little bit more chewy, I believe. Really? So so yeah. So like I always think like when I order wings, mm-hmm. I always go like, you know, I'll just take the wings. Now people ask like, do you want crispy or do you want anything yep. like that? I always felt like up until recently, like saying like crispy was almost like insulting. 
Because, like, it's kind of, like, assumed, like, yeah, I want my wings, like, crispy. Right. I don't want them, like, rubbery. Right. Like, no, or, yeah, or, like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, yes, yeah. yes. Like, so, so I, I always, like, I, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on this, about Buffalo. Yeah. And we're yeah. getting a little off track. I'm no, that's okay. Buffalo, got... but, but let's face it. Wings are for, for and foremost. So, I mean, so is... how you go about it is key. That's right. Do yeah. You, what, what are your opinion on saying crispy or not? So, so I grew up in a house, and I always thought it was the strangest thing my dad would always order wings extra crispy okay which i just assume to mean he wants them like charred because from my opinion they're always crispy yeah but he would say extra crispy yeah which like like i said that uh, that meant burnt to yes me. yes so i would go ugh. so i am of the mind that i shouldn't have to i shouldn't have to tell you i want them crispy yeah. they should just the standard is crispy right yeah they're, i mean they're deep fried they should be Crispy and, and fathers always had a way of getting what they want when it came to food. They, they well, knew what they wanted. That's uh, yeah. My, my, dad. my, my dad when he when he orders sandwiches sometimes if, if it's pre like disposed to have mayo on it he doesn't say like no mayo like please he goes and please under no circumstances <laughs> may the sandwich have mayonnaise on it. See, now here's the thing I gotta say this I have said no like mayo on my sandwich before and uh-huh. I've gotten mayo. Like it's happened to all of us, right? Like we yeah. said no tomato. You, you get, get to, yeah. He, I, anytime I, he's he's shooting a thousand with this with this method. He has never he's got thorough. mayonnaise on his, and so I'm like, okay, like you know, maybe that's something I got to do. Yeah. Dads have a way of getting what they want. Yeah. Um. All right, Zach Sheldon, it's been awesome having you here on the inaugural show. We uh, are so honored and and. By the way, thank you for all you've done to help us kind of get this. No, off seriously, the I'm, I'm excited to see where the 26 minute show goes. Uh, you know, it'll be it'll be great when yeah. you have you know Jim Kelly for episode Boy, 100, and we'll I'll be see. like, I was episode one, Jim. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so show <laughs> some respect. Get in line, buddy. Seriously, yeah. but uh, no, listen, I can kiss your butt, your guys' butts all day, but seriously, Banksy, Adam, you know, Dell, the team here. Yep. Obviously, it's awesome what you guys do. It's very exciting to see not just you know every week the new shirt and everything, but all the projects and everyone that we're working with. Well, to, Kind of help out the community. So shout out 26 Minutes, doing it all day, every day. All day, every day. There is no 26 here anymore. It's just 24 hours per day. Um, is there anything you want to, your socials, or anything you've got coming up that you want to kind of plug? We're, we're raising no, boats um, around here. No, seriously. Uh, I mean, train wreck sports, follow yep. it. I mean, we're just trying to do outside the box stuff for Buffalo coverage. The way I looked at train wreck sports is it's sports and entertainment. I do it for what I would want to see. I always want to see a Buffalo twist on anything. So yeah, I, I like to see that. that, and we like to have fun. So. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Zach. It's been awesome. Uh, thank you all for listening. Please um, we'll do all the stuff you're supposed to do on, on podcasts. I don't know. You could probably say it better That's than I could. That's a great line. Do all the stuff you're, you're supposed, supposed to do. To do on you know, everybody knows it yeah, now. Yeah, you know, You've follow on this platform. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Make sure you like it. Make sure you drop a comment, comment. with your horoscope in yeah. the comments. Leave you know? us a rating. Yeah. God, there's so much to do now. Leave us a rating, then delete it, and then re-rate it again. Yeah, do that. Yeah. See? He's, Double rating. We're already getting the, the inside <laughs> scoop. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you next time. Uh, whenever that may be. It's going to be soon, sooner than later. Again, Zach Sheldon, thank you so much for joining us.